Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I have something I've wanted to test out for a while now. This is the Advanced Shop Mini Heater Stove Cover. Alright everybody, welcome back. This is kind of a unique item. Um, it's a very simple item. And it's an item that I've wanted to test for a while. And I kept putting it off and putting it off because it was so inexpensive. I'm just like, yeah, I'll get around to doing it eventually. But with winter coming up, I do want to test it out and see how well it works. I know right now we're in the middle of, you know, we have like record heat warnings here in Nevada. So I know right now nobody's interested in getting warm. But uh, I'm going to test it out for you and see if it works and does what it's supposed to do. I did fire it up briefly with a uh, small little stove. And I'll explain how this works in a sec. Um, and it does seem to radiate heat very, very well, and that's its job. Essentially what this does is it sits on top of a stove, and the flame from the stove turns everything nice and warm inside, and it radiates heat out. Works very well. I mean, I had it on for under a minute, and it was scorching hot in the area that it was in. So it does seem to work very well. I would think this would be something really, really awesome to use when you're camping out and it's cold, even at a bug-out location where you need to... Uh, heat up your whatever your shelter you're in if it's a cabin if it's a tent whatever now that said again we're dealing with open flame we're dealing with fire all that you want to be very careful using something like this indoors if you're using this say in your house during a power outage or something um, something like that is fine if you have enough room if you have maybe a cracked window an open door you know <laughs> again I always think back when I say that to my tiny little one-room studio apartment in New York City where there was no way in hell I would have run one of these without getting carbon monoxide poisoning. It's, it was too small. But in my house here, I could run this in my kitchen and, you know, I've got really high ceilings. I've got a back door I can open. I have some ventilation if I open a window. So while, yeah, you're thinking, well, it's going to get cold, at least you can use this and you won't kill yourself in, in the process. So that's the caution I always give, especially inside a tent where you have two dangers. You have the fire danger and you have possibly getting uh, carbon monoxide poisoning. So you really want to be careful when using these kind of things, but say out in front of your tent, warming up your hands, warming up yourself while you cook, awesome item to have. So we're going to show you the ways that it, uh, it'll fit on most stoves. Again, it won't fit on tiny little ones. So if you think your little BRS titanium 25 gram stove is going to fit, no, it won't. <laughs> it won't work. But it is, does have various cutouts on the bottom to accommodate almost anything. You'll notice some of these go in and up, and some of these are just cutouts. Most of the time you'll be using these cutouts. Uh, very rare occasions where you have a stove where you can fit it up in there. But I'll show you all that in a second. Now it weighs about 14 ounces or 400 grams. So again, given its size and given its weight, it's not something you're going to put in a go bag or bug out gear. might be something you stick in your vehicle in an emergency kit with a stove you know, to warm you up roadside, whatever. If you can't, I definitely don't use it in your car, by the way. But warm you up roadside, maybe, if your car is no longer running, whatever. Something like that's pretty handy. Um, you'll notice a scratch on it here. I dropped it when I got it. That didn't come like that. So, again, you know, it's not made for abuse. So, it will happen like that. Now, another nice thing about it is it can be cooked on on top using a pot or pan. Again, I wouldn't slap a burger on top of here just plain. <laughs> It'd probably be pretty messy. But if you're using a pot or a pan, you can cook on top of it, and we're going to try that out. We're just going to boil some water for some coffee today. Um, you definitely want to make sure there's nothing flammable on the ground when you're using it. So it's useful to not only cook, but keep an area warm where you're cooking. So if you're working outside, and you're by your stove, and you're setting up your tent, and you know, you're know you not really set up yet, and you need to warm up, that's a real awesome item. So. I'm going to demo it on a couple things. Let me set it up and show you, and I'll bring you right back. All right, what we have here is a typical little, you know, butane canister gas uh, stove. I demoed this a while back. I really haven't used it since the video. <laughs> it's a great little item. I um, use these extensively in the restaurant business uh, when we would have um, Sunday brunches. And usually somebody was working uh, out front making omelets to order or making eggs and these were what we used constantly and you know they're easy to fix they're easy to deal with you know they'll come that get stored away like that so anyway enough about the stove you're going to take this and you're just going to place it on top now most of the time i've seen these used in videos they're used with this type of a stove and you can see how well that fits in there so you're running the flame and that's a little better there a little more 
centered. You're running the flame and it's heating up. And again, like I said, you're, you're probably not gonna be able to use the little inserts. You're probably gonna wanna use just the cutouts there. You wanna make sure you get it over the flame like that. So you're gonna be using this, um, running just some heat, and you can put something on top. So let's move on to the next type of stove we'd use this on. Let me get that out of the way. Something like these. Again, a wide base stove. This is a Luxata remote canister spider stove, I think they call it. Again, you know, it's not going to fit in those little tiny things. And one might fit, but then the other one won't. But that is very, very stable, and it's not going anywhere. And like I showed you, you can put something on top and cook, like I told you about. So that's definitely kind of cool, nice small area. Again, because this gets so hot, you want to make sure there's nothing down here, like a bunch of dead leaves or flammable stuff. You want to clear an area with just dirt underneath it because that heat will radiate back down and will possibly start a forest fire if you're in the wilderness. So, let's move on to the next stove. Of course, my BRS. I love this thing, the BRS-12A. It's like a blowtorch. It's incredibly loud. I'm going to just move the camera up a little here so you can see it um, on top of it. And there you go. Just sits on top like that. And uh, you may have to move it around a little to get it stable. You know, you don't want it rocking around like that if you're going to put a pot up top and it starts to boil and shake. So you just move it around a little till it gets stable. And I've gotten it stable a few times before. Um, it just takes a minute or two. There you go. That's not going anywhere. Um, so, you know, again, something like that. you got yourself the radiating heat. It's a little higher up, so you'll feel it on your body. And you can cook on top. So, really cool idea. Um, we're going to actually test it out fully today and see how it works. Another neat thing, too, if all you're carrying is an alcohol stove. Now, this is a larger one. This is the Trangia, the Swedish one. I don't know if you can see the bottom where it's got the, what is it, the SVEA. So, it's the Sevea NC76 with the three little crowns. Um, but something like this, a larger one, you have to be a little more careful with because you have to make sure that the inside diameter of this fits over that or on it. And I'll explain it to you. Of course, you're not going to tip your stove over full of alcohol, but you want it like this, not like this where it could tip over. So you want to make sure. But with a regular sized alcohol stove that's a little bit smaller than this, it'll fit right in there perfectly. Let's get it on there. Once I get it on there, it's sturdy. See, there you go. And that's really taking up no space. It's a little bit safer, I would say, for indoors because you're not, um, you don't have uh, gas burning, but you still have alcohol burning, so you still have to be careful. It's still a fire hazard, but it's a little bit safer for indoor use. And that is a really neat solution. Not too much to carry. Now, the one we're gonna test it on with is this guy here. Did a video on this one a while back. Um, I've been using this a lot in videos because I like the wider base on it. And again, you'll just be putting it on top like that and if you want, you can put, we'll put this on top and boil. It's got two cups of water in it. We'll put it on top and boil it and test it all out. So let me back up the camera a little bit and get the stove fired up and uh, we'll see how well it works. All right, let's get it fired up here. There we go. Make sure it's stable. On there, good. There you go. All right. So we're going to let this heat up. I can see the inside there is getting red hot already. We're going to let this heat up and see how well it works. Turn it down a little tiny bit because I don't want it coming out of the side. There. We're going to see how well it works. I'm going to put the water on top. Now remember, this is designed to soak up all that heat. So your boil times are going to be much, much slower. It's not going to be super fast. However, if we're doing something like eggs or something a little bit, I can feel the heat already there. You know, something that requires a little less heat and less direct flame might be really cool. So, I'm going to sit it on here and I'll bring you back when it's boiling and I'll give you an idea about how long it takes. But again, this is not going to be lightning fast. I just wanted to bring you back to show you how it glows inside there. I think that looks kind of cool. Um, it glows in there and gives you a nice warm radiating heat. I'll tell you one thing. The heat is really coming off that. I got my hand in front of it and I really need to invest in a heat gun. You know, because, you know, where you can point it at it and I can tell you the temperature. But um, I just thought it kind of looked cool, and it also shows you that that heat is radiating out really, really well. So it's been about six minutes. I'm finally getting a boil up top here. Um, but you get this too. This is a tool to remove this from that. I did put a wood thing under here because I noticed this was starting to warp. 
So that's something to think about. You know, with this canister, I'm kind of concerned about it. You know, I don't want it to get too hot. But obviously, you see how hot it gets down in this area. So let's take this off. That's, that's safe to touch. All right. And this is how you'll remove it. You pull it off like that. I'm not going to put it on here because it would burn the wood. I'm just going to put it on the floor behind me. It's still radiating heat like crazy. That's insane. All right. So let's pour it in there and make ourselves a cup of coffee while I tell you about it. Uh, it's still radiating heat. That's kind of cool. After you take it off that, you can kind of sit there and keep it around you and keep it nice and warm. You could even heat it up and then bring it inside your tent. Let me bring that back into the picture again. So it's definitely a cool item. Um, again, I need to buy a heat gun to point at these things. Temperature gun, you know, that you can point at it and tell you. But I'm telling you right now, that's hot. That's still hot. So if you can find a rock to stick under it, stick it inside your tent, be a pretty good heat source without the danger of any uh, carbon monoxide. So all in all, I'm pretty pleased with it. I'm going to make my coffee here. Cool that off, and I'll give you information on it. They run about fifteen eighty-five. The size on them is five point seven inches by four point seven inches. So they're not overly huge, but definitely not bug out bag or backpacking material. So let me finish up making this coffee, and I'll cool that off a little bit, bring you back, and give you my final thoughts on it. All right, so it's sufficiently cooled off now. I can pick it up. I did rinse it off a little bit, um, but it will get that kind of patina look to it after being heated up. No big deal, it's made to be used. So this really comes in handy for the person who already has a stove, or um, I would assume you could even almost use this on a, uh, a gas burner in your house, on your regular home stove if you use gas. Uh, that would work perfectly, I think. Um, I was concerned about this getting warm, the can itself. It was actually cold. Uh, so that tells me this might also be another way, in extreme temperatures where these cans don't perform very well, to keep the can a little warm while you're cooking on top of the burner itself, of the heater. So, it is the Advanced Shop Mini Heater Stove Cover. And as you can see, um, I had to put the wood down because it was starting to, you know, the plastic was starting to get wavy underneath. So it does generate a lot of heat downward, but it wasn't a danger to the butane canister at all. I mean, the isobutane canister is perfectly fine. And on a stove like the butane one that I showed you earlier, let me just sneak that in the picture here, this guy here, I think that wouldn't even be an issue, or a Coleman stove or anything like that. Imagine two of these and a dual burner Coleman stove. You'd have a pretty warm cooking area in very short order. And like I said, it did hold on to the heat very, very long. It was about uh, 35 minutes before it was cold enough for me to pick up with my hands. It was still warm, but it was cold enough to pick up my hands. And I just took it inside and put it in the air-conditioned house and let it cool off. So... Definitely a cool deal. It comes with this again. This is for, you know, being able to lift it up and down if you actually want to cook on the burner or not. Um, 15 bucks, way cheaper than, say, a Mr. Buddy heater, even though those are indoor safe. It's way cheaper than that. And if you use it with common sense, you really can't go wrong. So I'm going to put a link down below, and this is just another tool in your toolbox. It's not something you have to have. I just think it would make it really, really warm in an area very quickly. And you can take it off the burner, put it next to where you're cooking, and continue to cook your food on the burner if you don't want to leave it on there and cook on top. It did take longer to boil water on top, but of course, the heat is being trapped in here and radiated out. So this is just really an afterthought. But you can cook on it. And like I said, if you're cooking stuff like bacon or eggs where you don't want that direct, you know, hard flame coming up at it, that's a really good way to do it. It boiled water in about, well, I want to say seven minutes. It was like 640-something by the time I got bubbles in there. So definitely a cool item. I will put a link down below where you can pick it up. It is the Advanced Shop Mini Heater Stove Cover. You can pick it up at Amazon. Um, shop around. I don't know. If, this was the cheapest one I could find. These used to be five and six bucks a few months, a few years ago. Now they're 15. So they've gone up a little in price. But um, even on, you know, many of the other sites, of course, it's made in China, so any of the other Chinese resellers probably will have it cheaper. Um, but it's definitely a cool little item, and definitely, like I said, another tool in your toolbox. You don't have to buy this. You could buy yourself a heater, you know? But uh, it definitely works very, very well. And for, you know, outdoor camping and stuff, and for maybe a bug-out location, or even in your own home, if you have ventilation and high enough ceilings and enough area to really use this, that would be fine to use indoors, but you've got to be careful when you're using open flame indoors. 
So anyway, I will put the link down below. You can check that out. It's in my Amazon store. Don't forget to check out my Amazon store link down below. And don't forget to check out our Olight um, link down below. We have lots of cool stuff in the Olight store there. Um, lots of stuff coming out too. So we'll have a video on there. Uh, they have a new sale coming up. So subscribe for that if you're interested in picking up some Olights. We do have another flash sale coming up soon. And uh, don't forget to check out our Thrive Life link down below if you're interested in getting started on some freeze-dried food. Anyway, folks, I thank you for watching. Don't forget to share, click subscribe, click like. Stay safe and stay prepared.